tell me, how did the idea for the book come about? Well, I've been working at Kodak for uh, four years. I left a couple of years ago to step out, do my own thing again. You know, I have never stayed at a place more than a couple of years, and Kodak was the longest I stayed, and it was time for me to go. Uh, things weren't going to change the way they needed in order for the company to succeed. I'm still a big cheerleader for the company. You can obviously look at the recent news that's going on about the company. They're not making the changes. And that prompted me to really sit back and look at, a you know, where I was working in a very iconic brand, one of the greatest brands of all time, but yet couldn't seem to get out of the wet paper sack, so to speak. And it was having some difficulties. And so it was like running a gauntlet. And no matter what I did, no matter where I went, I was having difficulties and the people would fight me from the inside and from the outside. In fact, if you see the, the beginning of the book, I write the dedication to all you naysayers, opportunists, obstructionists who get in the way of driving change. Note, we will beat you. And so that was my way of say, look, there are other companies just like this one that have these difficulties. And so how can I inspire others to go out there and be agents of change, to not be satisfied with the status quo, and to get out there and make change and drive change? We're a very special breed, those agents of change, and I think they need all the encouragement they can get. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. You're absolutely right, Javit. Affecting change is, is not easy to do, and there are naysayers, and there are people who will try to tear you down. And uh, it's you use an analogy of your book in your book of field dressing a cow. And I I grew up on a farm in Indiana, and I'm probably one of the few people you ever talked to who's actually participated in that process. So I could really relate to your story in the book. So tell me about why is change so hard? Why is it such a tough process? And why does it take a certain type of person to be a change agent? Well, I think everybody has it in them to do it. I just don't think they want to because it's a tough job. It's a tough thing to do. I mean, you basically have to look at yourself in a, a constant state of change or to reinvent yourself and move. I, I've never had a problem with that, maybe because I have a short attention span. I don't know. But I just like doing new things and, and, and challenging things. I always like to jump into the hardest problems. I always like to take on the toughest jobs. I I like to go back to my place in South Dakota, and you'll find me clearing brush, checking fences, working hard. Uh, and I don't have to. I just like to. And so I think there is a special breed of people. But what you have to do is really get others to go with you. And if you can't get others to go with you, it makes it tough. And I think a lot of businesses think that they once they get to a certain level, and I think a lot of kids are that way as well, that they, once they hit a the certain level, everything will be great thereafter. And I've always learned that it's never that way. Even when you get big and think you're going to be the biggest, there's always someone bigger. And, you know, there's always another problem. There's always these things. And I just got that in my mindset that says, hmm, that's just the way it's going to be. And if that's the way it's going to be, then I'm going to constantly improve it. I'm constantly going to change. And I choose to step into it rather than step away. And I think more and more business leaders who are really good at, you know, driving business and driving high growth, because that's really what change agents are about, is getting the company to look at things differently and drive the, and ultimately the high growth and high margins and everything else that goes with it. Yeah, I think you're right that um, getting people on your team has got to be a key factor. Now, a lot of people who watch these videos don't work for Kodak, they don't work for IBM, they don't work for giant firms, but they may work for 25 people, 50 people type firms. What is the opportunity of being a change, a change agent in not a huge company? That, that well, I, think, yeah. Yeah, I think it's easier. I think it's easier to do because you don't have all these people looking over your shoulder and all these HR rules and legal rules and all these people who are saying, no, you might have only one or two. But, but by and large, it's a little bit easier to affect change. I think the biggest thing is that people fear change or they fear to take the chance at change. And I, I, I describe this in my book, Running the Gauntlet, of the, you know, the couple seconds of fear. I mean, when I first learned to ride a horse, it was in my late 30s, early 40s, and I wanted to really ride horses. I never had the opportunity, even though I was growing up in South Dakota, I just never had the chance to be a real cowboy. And yet, I wanted to. So I went out and bought a horse, bought a horse trailer, bought all the saddles, bought all this stuff, read Horses for Dummies. I swear to goodness I read that book. And there is a book, and I watched the videotapes, I did all that, and I still didn't know how to really saddle the horse or do the things I had to do. And I can remember when I first got my horse, I took him out of the trailer, he took off running, I had to go 
catch them. That took me like half a day. But I finally had to choose to be a beginner, and I went up to a 14-year-old girl. I mean, here's this big, macho, you know, 280-pound strapping guy. Uh, that's me. And, um, and I had to go up to this young, petite, little girl, basically, and ask her to teach me how to saddle my horse. Well, that was scary. And, you know, but I finally realized, hey, I'm never going to learn how to saddle that horse unless I get someone to teach me how. So that's one of the things that you can do in a small organization is get somebody else to help you and get past the couple seconds of fear and make it happen for your organization. That's a key, key way of doing it. So push, 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 push. Great stuff. I, I like your idea of, uh, on one hand, overcoming the fear. I think that's, that probably stops people. They're so afraid of failure, they don't try anything um, extreme or different. And I think if they can overcome that, as well as not only having the, the self-confidence to take a chance, but to be humble enough to ask for help, I think that's, a, that's an interesting idea. So anyway, what's your plan on promoting the book? Tell me about how you're, wait, wait, I know you're in New York now. I know you're promoting the book. You're, you're going on Fox News. And what else are you doing? Uh, we're, we're everywhere. We'll be on the MSNBC. We'll be on many more national shows. Hopefully the Today Show. We're still working that. But, you know, we're doing uh, radio tours. We're, yesterday alone I did about 20 radio stations. I'm doing webcasts like this. My friends are helping me out. I talk about friend sourcing in my book, and I'm using friends to help me. So they're tweeting. They're putting, you know, reviews up on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, up on Indie, individual book sites, Books A Million. I could think of all these places. But we're doing videos. We're doing emails. We're doing, uh, I'm on the front cover. We use public relations pretty heavily. I've got a team over at Tallgrass Public Relations, and they specialize in handling a lot of authors and thought leaders, and they're just doing a fantastic job, you know, because I'll be on the front cover. If you can imagine this space on the front cover of magazines, I'll be on the front cover of Tweeting and Business Magazine, subscriptions of 18 million. I'll be on the front cover of American Marketing Magazine, on the front cover of Selling Power Magazine. So uh, if you can imagine this space on those front covers, it's not so scary, but it should make people hopefully open up and think, they, if you can put somebody that ugly on the front, the content's got to be good. So, so we're doing a lot of stuff around there, and then obviously we're using social media. We're activating all of the time. I was on the street this morning, uh, Jim Cramer show. I ran into Jim Cramer in the hallway. We talked. We're going to do some more things, you know. And then I tweet that out, and I talk about it. And I talk about my day every single day, and that helps to promote it. You know, it helps to get engaged with my fans, and and they're growing, you know, hundreds a day, and that that which is just awesome to be able to have. I, I really wish you all the best with the book. I want to thank you for having appeared on the show. You've been a great yeah. guest. You had some great information for our fans. And uh, hopefully we can have you again on the show sometime, Jeffrey. Anytime, any place. And, folks, if you're watching this still, reach out to me on Twitter, Jeffrey Hazlett, H-A-Y-Z-L-E-T-T. -T. Find me at Hazlett.com. Find me on Facebook. Find me on LinkedIn. I respond to everything. I love you, and keep, you know, keep out there, and, and everybody, run the gauntlet. That's the key thing. Keep running the gauntlet. Amen. Thanks, Jeffrey.